people, Dustin Dolby here of Workflow. Today I just wanted to chat and cycle through a few shooting tables. We'll talk about how that might affect your approach to cleanly lighting a bottle, like this nice Serbian red, which has glossy and matte aspects to it. We wanna make it look beautiful here. And the shooting table is gonna play a big role in how the light sort of just renders our bottle. Okay, so, I mean, this is what we arrived at with the cheapest speed light you, know, you can get but certain setups lend themselves to atmospheric editorial shooting. You know what I mean? And certain tables are definitely more ideal for what you could call catalog or rendered background purposes. And you can develop a bit of a system to make sure you're using the space around your bottle in a good, efficient way. So let's just dive right in here with a larger table. And this is kind of like a classic table. A lot of people who are beginning just shoot on a table like this at a necessity because it's laying around. The light I'm using is a speed light going into a strip box adapter. And that's a pretty classic setup just for a nice strip light uh, using a speed light, which is a lower cost option. And there's pros and cons that we'll get into. And I've gotten into a bit of my other wine tutorials. Now, one thing right off the bat to mention is this distance. Like we can, we can put this airtight to the edge, but at the end of the day, we need to move our scene closer to the edge of the table if proximity to the light is at all a concern. So that's something right away you gotta consider the perimeter of the table creates a physical barrier you can't move lights into. You can lift them on top of the table, but that actually has ugly ramifications as well. So there's a lot of little tips and tricks. And that's why I'm making this video. So let's start shooting some of this and we just want a nice beautiful strip light down the side. And we'll take a look. Oh yeah, and I should mention, I have another speed light that is firing off of a stool behind me. In case you're wondering why the background's so bright here, but we're getting a pretty thin highlight. I usually like something bigger when I'm trying to give the bottle some character, unless it's a secondary light. But in this case, I think we might focus on a big highlight as being our primary light source. So let's move this a little closer. Yeah, something like that looks nice. I'm gonna back it up half an inch. Let's take a look at this one. It's pretty similar to the others. Bit of a bigger highlight. But as we scan down here, we see there's a certain consistency to the highlight. Oh, 2018, what a year. But we're not getting the cleanest highlights down here. Right? That's something to be avoided. That's something you could think about fixing in Photoshop, but it's something that, if avoided, uh, sure is nice for a clean look. So, you know, when you start shooting your own projects and your own product photography, it's really your job when there's an ugly highlight just to figure out where it's coming from the room and either technically or optically try to suppress the highlight. And the shooting table is one that people often overlook because it's right under your nose the whole time, but it's a little bit tricky as you just saw in those last exposures. So I'm using our custom welded table over here. It's a custom welded solution. Search for a baby wall plate if you want a similar solution online. And they make for kind of a smaller table. It's a nice size, but you can, you can fit a drink and a glass and a splash, or you can tell a little story on a table this big and it can still work. It's probably what, like 10% the width of that other table. So let's see if it plays a significant role. And I'll just use our remote here to fire off another one. And we'll discuss, because image speaks a thousand words. All right, guys. Okay. I mean, we'll look right down here and it's suppressed the problem a tiny bit, but that's still a significant factor if you're going for the, you know, quote unquote, clean as a whistle look. Keep in mind, we are obsessing over our highlight right now in an unhealthy way almost, but it is healthy because it's a narrow scope of this episode. But keep in mind, there's tons of shooting scenarios where you would shoot this bottle with some grapes or some glass and you know there's context going on and people will be very forgiving to highlights not being perfect or that's kind of subjective. I should say having a full access down the side of the bottle. Like in our final image, we obsessed over it and we were able to provide that access right down to the bottom. So you can see if left completely unobstructed, and I'm just bringing in our LED strip box to make it more obvious, the bottom of your bottle is significantly affected by the shooting table. It's obvious here because it's glossy, but really even if it was matte, you'd have the same problem. And it's more true as we increasingly look downward at our bottle. I love the medium table, I use it often, but when I'm shooting a small product or something like a bottle, I'll elect to use this small circular custom welded table, which is very similar 
it screws onto a light stand. A cup upside down would provide a similar function actually, but it provides the ability to get cozy next to the product, which makes a world's a difference. As we saw before, when we go to the big table, the huge table to a medium table, the difference is negligible. But when we go from a medium table to a very small table, all the way down to the bottom, and that's beautiful and usable. I could edit that into our final shot. But make sure to subscribe, guys. This stuff's not rocket science, but I do enjoy unpacking it with you guys. If you're doing a one light setup, minus the background light, which could be avoided, a reflector card is a great way to give it some dimension, and you've seen that before. And compared to just a plain shot like we've had up before, this will skirt in a lot of detail on the side. That gives it a whole juicy feeling. Hey, if you guys are enjoying this kind of tutorials, make sure to subscribe and check out more. If you want to see me edit this wine bottle, I'm actually learning how to do emails and build an email list. I will email you a beautiful video of me editing this wine bottle because it really only takes a few simple steps, especially when you take time to craft out a good image straight out of camera, editing so easy. So it'll be like a four minute video. So put your email below if you want to see that. Leave me comments for future videos, guys. Hoping to make some great ones soon. And I enjoyed shooting today. So I'll see you all next time and take care. Mm -hmm.